Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in this Pi game tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be creating hitboxes for the enemy and our character. And whenever the enemy hits the uh, player within a certain area we want to be losing health and when we hit the enemy with a bullet we also want the enemy to lose health. So the hitbox tutorial that we're going to be going through today is the first step towards creating this sort of damage mechanic. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to the heroes class and add another variable. Um, under the category, we're going to comment the category as uh, we're going to label the category as health because the hitboxes have something to do with the health of the character. And we're going to write that self dot hitbox is equal to a tuple, <coughs> and the tuple has the value self dot x, self dot y. And then it has two more values, which are going to be, hold on, let me just uh, s quickly have a look at what I wrote before. We're going to say 64 and 64. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the hitbox um, by simply uh, using the hitbox that we just determined over here in the draw function of our heroes class. So we're going to write self dot hitbox uh, is equal to self, or I'm just going to copy that from above, self dot x self dot y 64 and 64. And then we want to draw a rectangle, which is going to be our hitbox. So pi game dot draw dot rect. And when you're drawing a rectangle, you have to give the surface where you want to draw on, which is of course going to be win, which is short for window. Um, it's the variable we specified in one of the earlier episodes as the um, surface where we draw everything or the canvas, you can also call it. Um, so we have the canvas, which is uh, given as an argument. And in addition to that, we need to add a color for the hitbox. We're simply going to say that the color of the hitbox is going to be black. So that's going to be 0, 0, 0. And then we have to put in the uh, sort of coordinates of the hitbox. And uh, the coordinates of the hitbox are already given by our hitbox here. Now, you may wonder um, what exactly this sort of means. And I'll show you in a second in a diagram why we managed to um, get a, um, why we can draw a rectangle using only these, this one tuple. Uh, it might not be intuitive at first sight. So we're going to write self.hitbox, <coughs> which specifies where it should be drawn. And then if you add one more argument at the very end, you can specify how thick the outline of the box should be. We're going to make it one pixel. So let me go ahead and run this now, and you'll see that our hero is surrounded by a black box, um, which sort of follows him everywhere. Now this black box is the first sort of hitbox which we've managed to implement. But now I want to show you why exactly this uh, hitbox is being drawn. So let me open, let me open this uh, sort of um, diagram which I've created. When we specify a tuple with four values in the rectangle function, uh, then the first two uh, parameters, x and y, give the x and y coordinate of where the top left hand corner of the hitbox is going to be. So this is sort of specified by this small red dot which I've drawn. And the next two values are the height and the width of the hitbox. And the height is going to be the, um, the height which I've labeled over here in green. And the width is going to be what I've labeled over here in purple. And we have put in the values self.x, self.y, 
and then height and width both equal to 64, which is precisely why we sort of have the hitbox just like we can see it on the surface when I go ahead and run the program. This is exactly the hitbox we get, and this is the reason why we sort of get it. Yeah. So now what we want to do is we want to create a hitbox which doesn't go around the entire image, but it only goes around the character. So the uh, sort of checkered area that I've uh, got in the diagram, it represents the entire image file. Let me go ahead and show you that this really does correspond to the image file. If I go open up a file in the, uh, of, of the character walking in my file tree, you'll see that this image is 64 by 64 pixels, but not all the pixels in this area are also drawn on. There is only a small part of it which is sort of drawn on. And we only want to, the hitbox to be around the area of the character where the pixels are colored and the, um, well, the, uh, the, the hero is being shown. So we need to make some small adjustments to the hitbox. And we're going to make the adjustments that I prepared earlier. We're going to say that we're going to add some value to the um, X coordinate, which is going to be 15. We're going to add a little bit to the Y coordinate, 15 as well. And then we're going to say that the width is going to be 30 pixels and the height is going to be 40 pixels. And now when I run this again, my character should be perfectly enclosed. Well, not exactly perfectly enclosed, but you'll see that it's more or less enclosed by this small square. And that is going to be the hitbox for our small character. And now what remains to do is to add a hitbox for our enemy. To add a hitbox for our enemy, we do pretty much the same thing that we just did for our hero. So we can go and copy the hitbox for our hero and uh, then go ahead and paste it into our enemy. So I'm going to open the enemy class and add another label as a comment, which is going to be health because again, the hitbox has something to do with the health of the character. And then I am also going to add the rectangle um, around the enemy. So let me go find the rectangle we just drew. The rectangle we drew was over here and the hitbox was, oh, hold on. I just made a mistake there. Let me copy and paste this copy and down in the draw method for our enemy. I'm going to go ahead and paste it back. And now I still need to make a few adjustments since the uh, hitbox that I just pasted in is specific to our hero, which is the small gladiator. Um, we still need to make it fit around our enemy. And I did this before and figured that, um, hold on, let me just find it real quick in the uh, file that I wrote before. Yeah, so for the enemy, we're just going to write self.x plus 25, self.y plus 15, and then 30 and 40. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this now, and what should happen is that we should have a hitbox around both our hero and our enemy. But you see that the hitbox for our enemy is still a bit off, so let me just move it to the left a bit further. So decrease the x value. The x value is given over here, so I'm going to decrease that to 15. Um, hopefully this should be better. And yeah, the hitbox sort of surrounds the enemy a bit better now. All right, so that's our two hitboxes done. And there's one more thing that I want to mention. You'll notice that I added the hitboxes for the enemy and our hero, which is the player. 
uh, both in the init method and the draw method. Now the reason why I do that is because we want the hitbox to be updated every single time we move around the screen. So let me show you what happens if I take the um, hitbox or yeah, takes it, take the hitbox out of the draw method. So if I'm not updating the hitbox, then now you'll see that for our hero, when I move the hero, he will sort of be able to move out of his hitbox. So I need to somehow create a um, hitbox first in our init method, and then I need it to be updated when I draw it. So now, I need, uh, now you can see that once I put it back into the um, both the init method and the draw function, uh, the uh, hitboxes are all right again. Okay, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can implement collisions. So we want to, of course, have the enemy be able to shoot bullets that actually damage the goblin. And we also want the ga goblin to be able to damage our hero when he is punched. But more on that in the next episode. If this video helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated on this tutorial series. See you in the next one.